Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to use the URAC library to write an HTTP client with the Rust programming language. The first thing we're going to do is create a new project with the cargo command. So let's type cargo new HTTP client and hit enter. Then let's change directory into this HTTP client directory and open our editor on this directory. All right, here you can see the usual TOML file for dependencies for a Rust project and our main.rs file. Okay, so as a first step, let's uh, introduce our URAC dependency into the TOML file. And let's open the terminal and build this project so we can start caching all the code. So cargo build, enter. Now, going back to our main.rs file, we can start with a brief summary of what we're going to do. Okay, so in here you can see, well, we have a reference to some documentation on the URAC library. And we're going to perform an HTTP GET. And here you can see an example of using the curl command to do this. And then we're going to introduce path parameters to our HTTP GET request. And then we're going to see an example on how to use query parameters for our HTTP GET request. Then we're going to move on into performing a POST request, where we can specify some headers and a body for the HTTP request. And finally, we're going to see an HTTP patch request and we're going to provide some headers and a body for the request. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to import the URAC module. All right, and then let's see how can we implement a simple HTTP GET request. All right, here you can see that we are using the get function from the URAC library, and then we're gonna invoke the call method on the request um, structure that is returned by the get function. And eventually we're gonna unwrap this result and we can inspect some details about the response via the print line macro and printing, for example, the status code and the body of the HTTP response. All right, so let's go ahead and run this code to see if it works. So cargo run. Okay, so here in the output, we can see a JSON array with lots of JSON objects representing posts. And if we scroll up to the top of this list, we should be able to see the response code. Right, so the response code is 200, as we can see here in the string that we are printing with the print line macro. And then the response body is a very long array of JSON objects representing our posts. Okay, let's move on to the next example on how to provide path parameters. Let's comment out our previous example. And here, there's nothing too fancy. We're just interpolating our 
string representing the URL with a placeholder for our to-do ID. Uh, eventually, we're going to invoke an HTTP GET function, sorry, uh, request, uh, the same we're doing with curl, for example, and this will be the URL uh, providing the number one in the URL path. Here you can see the usual chain of functions and uh, we should see as the response the status code and the body of the HTTP response. As you can see the get function is requiring as an input a pointer to the str uh, type so we have this handy uh, method that converts a string into a, a pointer to the str type so let's go ahead and run this code to see if it works all right we see some output so the response code is 200 and this is a to do object with the id equals to one the same we specified in our url path so the code works and we can move on to our next example so our next example is about http query parameters so the key values we see after the question mark in a url so let's see an example of this all right here you can see that in our chain of functions from the urec library we can provide uh, these key values by invoking the query function that is returning itself so we can actually chain multiple key values pairs so we can provide multiple query parameters for our HTTP request. Here, as usual, we're going to invoke the print line macro to check the status of the HTTP response and the body of the HTTP response. OK, so let's go ahead and run this code. All right, and as you can see here, we are retrieving all the comments for a given post and the well the response code is 200 and the response body provides a JSON array with JSON objects and each object contains a post ID equals to 1 as we uh, asked in the query parameter of our HTTP request so all good let's move on to our next example so our next example is about an http post request we need to provide a header for our request and the body for our request so in here you can see that we can invoke the set function that returns itself and in here we can specify a key value pair for our header and then we can invoke this handy function called send json to provide a body to our http request and this body can be specified uh, via this json macro provided by urac where you can see we can basically build our JSON object included as a body for our HTTP request. As usual, we're gonna invoke the print line macro to print the HTTP response status code and then the HTTP response uh, body. So let's go ahead and run this code. all right as you can see we have an http response code of 201 
and then a response body uh, representing the same information we sent while we are invoking the HTTP POST request. So the code works and we can move on to our final example on how to use the HTTP patch functionality. Okay, so in here we should notice that we don't have a handy a shortcut function to invoke for the patch verb of the HTTP requests, but we can provide the method directly as a string. So we're going to invoke this request function uh, very in a very similar way to the other cases. So this is the path where we interpolate a patch ID for an existing uh, object that we want to update. And then we're going to specify, the, uh, as we said before, the patch method uh, clearly as a string. We can set some headers and then we can provide an HTTP request body with all the details that we need. And finally, as usual, we invoke the print line macro to check the HTTP response status and the HTTP response body. All right, let's run this code to see if it works. And all good, we receive an HTTP response of response code of 200 and then our response body represents the information that we provided while we were invoking the HTTP request with the patch method. One final thing we could uh, highlight is that if we just comment out, uncomment this code for one moment and we open the implementation of this post function, for example, we see that this is just syntactic sugar for the function we use for the patch method, where the library itself uh, interpolates details, for example, the method, and in this case is post, put, delete, head, and so on. All right. That's it for today. This is a brief overview of this UREC library for um, HTTP requests, so we can write HTTP clients in Rust. Happy Rust coding to everyone, and I'll catch you on the next one.